Hi, um, this is Tyann Marsink, and I am so glad that you guys are here uh, to join us. I have a special guest. Um, this is Gary Lunn from Atlanta, Georgia. He is a photographer, and he writes a blog, photographyexpress.com. And today he's going to talk to us about getting sharper photos. How are you, Gary? Good. I'm very good, Tyann. How are you? I'm good. We have a thunderstorm rolling through, but um, I love thunderstorms. Oh, cool. We have a uh, very hot weather here, almost 97 today, uh, sunny, but I think it's going to rain soon. So hopefully I'll be OK. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll send some <laughs> rain to you. <laughs> All right. So tell us, um, you have a few tips for us um, to get sharper photos. What is your first tip? Um, so I love beginner photographers always ask me this question. And uh, if they go online, I'm sure there's like millions of articles talking about how to get sharper pictures. So um, after reading all these books, going through a lot of articles, I can basically summarize in uh, three things. So one of them is make sure you have good light when you take the photograph. Uh, secondly, OK, sure what kind you... of light it would be considered good uh, light? Yes, sure. Um, for example, if you're indoor, uh, saying uh, if you're taking an indoor photo at night, make sure you use a flash. Um, with a softbox, hopefully, to make sure you have a, a good enough uh, lighting. Because a lot of people, when they get like a very good DSLR, when they take out uh, the camera, take the photo, they see, this is blurry. Um, is that something wrong with my camera? But 99% of the case, it is because you don't have enough light in your photograph to uh, have a good enough shutter speed uh, to get it focused. So having a good light is uh, very important for your rental property, uh, photography, or for myself, I do a lot of portrait photography. This is uh, very important. Um, okay, and, and then you yes. mentioned having a soft box. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them what, what a soft box is? Soft box is? Yeah, sure. Um, a soft box is basically, uh, you, if you think about an umbrella, having an umbrella uh, open, but with a white diffuser behind it, so that uh, when the flash bounces uh, back from the umbrella, it produces a lot better, softer light. Uh, because for portrait photography, having a soft light is very important. Uh, if uh, Just for a uh, basic introduction, a soft light is a light that has a very uh, mild fall off. So if, for example, if you are taking a headshot of a person, for example, for myself, if you go under direct sunlight uh, in the middle of the day, in noon, you will see uh, very dark shadows. Um, if the sun's hitting myself this way, I have all these shadows on this side, that is hot shadow. And if you use a good softbox with white diffuser on it, the light fall is going to be very mild. So you still see shadow on this side of my face, but uh, it's very light shadow. So this is uh, what Okay, and then as far as, as far as um, a flash, do you, most people will have it like a basic DSLR camera and they've got an on camera flash and then you can also get off camera flash. Tell exactly. us what would be best. Exactly. Uh, an off camera flash is something you can put uh, on top of your DSLR. Um, usually a lot of people buy the major brand ones like Canon, Sony. For myself, I like to use uh, this, uh, your new one. YN 560. That's the one I have. Oh, really? Yeah. OK, this is the best <laughs> uh -huh. flash you can ever get. It's only like $60 or 70 bucks on Amazon. Comparing to the 500 bucks Canon or even 700 bucks the Nikon flashes, they are basically the same. Uh, there's only one function that you can't get with uh, this, which is the, uh, uh, the TTL function, which is like automatic focus uh, for flashes. But other than that, I don't use it basically, and uh, it does 99% of the jobs. So I highly recommend this for all kinds of photography that you do. So our first tip that we talked about was um, using off-camera flash and using a soft box to make the light softer so we don't get harsh shadows. Right. And that mm -hmm. way, you can have a fast enough shutter speed so that your photos are not blurry. Yes, that's right. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So. Now, what is tip number two? OK, tip number two is uh, very simple, but yet uh, it's something that you must get, I think, uh, at the very beginning of your photography stage, which is getting a tripod. Uh, I've got one with me. Uh, mine is the Manfrotto. 
tripod. Uh, this is the 190CX Pro 4. I'm not sure if you can see. Um, it's not the most lightweight tripod you can get, but light enough that you can still carry. Uh, if, if you're a rental property photography, this is great to have. I even went hiking with this a few times. Um, if you have to bring this for eight hours, mountain hike, I probably recommend getting a monopod instead. But um, having a tripod like this is very useful for your everyday photography because it will ensure you don't have um, camera shakes when you are doing, uh, especially night photography. Um, and also, um, for me, even for portraits, I also use it when I uh, go to a client shoot because I can mount my uh, DSLR on the tripod and I can just talk to the client directly, post them and just use a, a wireless trigger to take the picture and that's it. I can focus more on the client and not just uh, how to uh, fiddle around with my camera. So a good tripod, um, then we can do longer exposures uh, without any camera shake or anything like that. Exactly. Cool. All right, what's and tip number three? The tip number three is about focusing. Uh, a lot of times, let me get my camera again. A lot of times when people focus, for example, if you are my subject right now, people tilt the camera when they focus, after they lock the focus. So what you want to do is after you lock on your focus, make sure you uh, slide, but not tilt when you uh, focus lock on your subject because the, the plane of focus is going to change. Um, if you tilt your camera, for example, if I focus right on your eyes and if I tilt my camera up a little bit, your eyes will be in focus, but maybe part of your face won't be in focus. So make sure you slide up or down, left or right, but not tilt when you take the photograph. So uh, these three are the most important tips that I have, uh, summarizing all the articles or blog posts I have written. There are actually a lot more online, so you can uh, uh, find, find them in uh, Google or go to uh, my website. Very cool. OK, so Gary's website is photographyexpress.com. And Gary, why don't you pull that up, and we'll show that up real quick. Cool. So this is Gary's website, photographyexpress.com. And you, he also has a free ebook if you sign up for his email list. Um, it's really cool. I downloaded the ebook myself. And he has a lot of information on there, especially for beginner photographers. So you want to take a look at that. And he goes into even more detail about getting sharp photos. Yes, you can uh, download my ebook here uh, on the right hand side of the toolbar. And uh, you can learn about photography, uh, photo editing, and how to get inspirations when you run out of ideas. Uh, you can also go to my portfolio website at um, GaryLoonPhotography.com or just GaryLoon.com. Um, it has all the uh, portraitures that I have taken um, the past few months. Very nice work. Oh, thank you. Well, Gary, thank you so much for coming in. Um, oh, and then I also have to mention that Gary wrote an article for um, the digital digitalphotographyschool.com, which is really cool. Um, so I'm going to go read that shortly. And I will have a link to um, his article in the blog post below. And then he'll, I'll also have a link to his website and his portfolio website so everybody can um, easily click on that and go there. Hmm. Gary, thank you so much for coming in. Um, coming in. Thank you for getting online. <laughs> this no problem. Thank you, me. Diane. And um, hopefully we'll see you again. And um, I will send some people over your way. We, I really appreciate um, the information you've given us. You're very welcome, Tyan. Thank you.